Okay, great. Good morning, friends. Nice to have all of you here. And first of all, welcome to Varsha and Sneha for taking time out. I'm sure uh, you have been spending all your weekends for the last six months in the class. And last Sunday, you would have been a uh, little relaxed, saying that, okay, from next Sunday, there is nothing much for me, but we brought you out here again, right? After the graduation that we had, uh, ceremony that we had the other day. Great to have both of you here, uh, and uh, we have a few part, a few participants in the session already. We can get started. Maybe we'll start with a round of introduction, and from there we will take it forward. Uh, my name is Sridhar, the Chief Business Officer at Talent Sprint, and uh, happy to be part of the session. I'm basically been a throughout sales and marketing professional through my life, uh, largely in the financial services world. Now moved on to tech ten years back when we launched uh, Talent Sprint. Very interesting journey. I'm sure some of those experiences I will have an opportunity to share with you. And uh, we have Varsha. Varsha, would you like to do a short intro about yourself before we proceed further? Hi, uh, I'm Varsha and I'm a B2B marketer working for a SaaS company. So I've had uh, three years experience in uh, marketing strategy and uh, campaign execution for uh, IT operation management solutions. So I've also handled uh, event planning, um, marketing, uh, market, market research, SEO, SEM, and other activities. Okay, that's good. Uh, I have a little more understanding about you from my colleagues. I think you spend a lot of time reading books. Yeah, I like reading books, which is why I got into content writing uh, the job uh, okay. in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then it went on to marketing. Okay, great. So you're a SaaS-based company and working in that. And I think one additional information valuable for all the participants here is that she is one of the alumni of the AI Powered Marketing Program. She was uh, uh, one of the early adopters for being part of the first batch itself, which got graduated around the week back. Now I'll turn over to Sneha. Hi, Sneha. Welcome uh, again. Hello, Look sir. forward to a short intro about you before we proceed further. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sneha Maikar. I am a B2B, B2C marketer. I have uh, over 14 years of experience in marketing in uh, healthcare, so medical devices and pharmaceuticals. I have worked across um, various therapy segments um, in small, mid-sized, big uh, Indian as well as multinational um, organizations. And um, my focus has always been uh, towards um, strategy. And um, I have uh, one of my skills, I would say, which I've developed over time is product excellence. So um, I have been a part of this uh, cohort and uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Thank you for inviting me here today. Thanks, thanks, thanks Neha for a uh, short intro. Good. I think uh, it's a good starting point. We'll probably get going. In terms of format, what I would probably like to do is to take uh, a few, ask a few questions to both uh, Varsha and Sneha based on their experience. And in the meanwhile, as and when we get uh, questions from the attendees, I will turn over to you, both of you, to answer. So just, I mean, uh, let me probably start with Sneha. This question is for you. Right. Uh, I'm sure uh, you're a seasoned professional, more than a decade's experience. And I'm sure uh, based on your profile, I think you've worked for big companies, right, both global and Indian brands, and in a very, very niche and interesting sector, which is uh, healthcare and, uh, and I'm sure pharma and healthcare, which is a big area. So just, just give me a small uh, brief as to why you wanted to take AI uh, forward marketing as a area. Forget about the program. We will talk about the program later because something before the program is something that you want to get into something, right? You, there should be an intent and interest in learning something new. So can you just uh, take us through the story on what triggered you to look at uh, using technology for marketing that to new deep tech like AI for marketing? Maybe a uh, so, sir, actually, I started my career as a management trainee. And what typically happens in a pharma company is that um, we get uh, external data. So we get data, which is prescription analysis data. This is the doctors, they write prescription. Or we get market share data of various brands. And uh, we call it as the ORG IMS data. So I have been 
uh, seeing and dealing with data since the start of my career you know and uh, all these years you know um, uh, one thing which has been actually put in our minds uh, is um, uh, you know measuring data measuring effectiveness of campaigns because um, we are in an industry where uh, you know the on ground medical representatives mrs are the one who are going to execute campaigns so uh, we might come up with the most uh, innovative um, campaign but how it gets executed on ground is what determines uh, how successful we are you know in uh, making one so um, going by you know what uh, peter drucker says that what gets measured gets done so this is something which we have been since the beginning you know and um, i wanted to explore new dimensions of um, uh, analyzing data so beyond the sorry can i sorry please go ahead please yeah. go ahead please go ahead so i wanted to actually explore new dimensions of uh, analyzing data of uh, inferring data i mean what we've been typically doing is maybe looking at the pivot tables that come to us every month from our um, uh, team or you know trying to infer uh, insights from them and utilize them in making um, strategic decisions so ai uh, has been on my mind uh, since some time but um, i wasn't sure if i am ready to take up a course on uh, ai because uh, i don't come from that background of uh, statistics you know so um, it, i wanted uh, i wanted to learn something which will help me take more data driven decisions okay. that will help me speak to my management in a more scientific way so when i'm going with the data for any campaign or if say i'm asking a uh, extra budget which we you know it's not so easy to get when we ask for extra bu- budget or opex for any particular new project i should have some solid basis and i should be speaking with data because i feel data is power and that is the reason um, i actually uh, took this step to uh, dive into ai Very good. great that that's interesting i think pharma is a 20 billion dollar market in india and i'm sure the marketing spends are pretty high as such while while it's not too visible because it's not too much b2c it's a lot of uh, it on straight for people talking to individual doctors and of course a lot of hacks and other things happening parallelly i mean it's a very interesting or uh, i mean it's it's a very interesting industry because i remember i have closely worked with a person who started as a medical representative became a ceo of a company over the last 30 years and every 3 months we meet up really looking at how things are changing i mean it's been a great journey for him and i have learned a lot and i'm sure i will be able to learn something from you sneha thanks thanks for sharing this now let me turn over to uh, varsha right uh, sneha has had a 13 years of experience before getting into this in an industry which is largely b2 b2c i would say right individual customers take the uh, service but of course there are intermediaries like the doctors and the distributors and the others in between pharmacies in between you are in a completely different field right yeah. you are into the saas services which is largely b2b in nature yeah right so can you just tell me what is the motivation to get into an area like ai for you as a marketer so for me i work in a, I, i work for a suite of products of it man it operations management so so uh, we have like seven products in the particular suite and we collect a lot of data on a daily basis so we analyze our data for example if it's a traffic downloads the installations and everything we analyze it on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis but then most of it is very manual and we our product has been in the market for almost uh, 10 plus years now so we have huge amounts of data but then it when it comes to decision making it was very difficult as to determine you know what to take and what not to take and how to focus the future because the market is uh, completely varying and we not only cater to india we cater all over the world for example if you take australia or uh, uh, new zealand market it's primarily cr- cloud driven ours is a on premise slash hybrid product so depending upon the geography 
depending upon the kind of market uh, each country has, we'll have to cater to their needs and, uh, uh, and implement strategies that will help us cater to that market. So, uh, you, you know, uh, taking all of this data and implementing was, uh, was kind of like difficult. So while I was, uh, I was just, uh, while I was just browsing through LinkedIn, I came across this course. And then uh, I was already taking a, a business, a data business course on Udemy. But then uh, when I came across this course, it seemed very relevant because it had mainly to do with data. And also uh, it taught, taught me how to implement different marketing strategies, which we had not done before. So it gave us a clear, uh, it gave me a clear input as to what I can do with my data. Good. I think uh, both have the same basis of data being available not to, to be used effectively, but the end use case in terms of market making campaigns effective or making decisions effective is a small uh, deviation between the two. So now let's look at the next step here, right? When you joined this program, you came across 80 other people who are along with you each coming from a different area, different background. There are some with 15, 20 years experience, some with three years, I think, if I'm not wrong, Asha is the youngest in the group, right? And uh, some with five years, some with 10 years experience. And I'm sure you would have spent a lot of time interacting with each other, either in the group work or in making the projects or working on the experiments. And I'm sure they would have come out with some interesting use cases themselves, right? Is there anything that any of the, any of the participants came out which sounded very exciting to you? I think it was a capstone project that we did because we were one of those groups to do two, uh, uh, to take two domains for capstone projects. One was a SNEAS, uh, which is a healthcare company, and the other one was an edtech company. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was uh, really fun and exciting to, you know, work on uh, what, what we're going to do for it and, uh, you know, have the problem statement and the objectives and, and as to how to go about it. So that was uh, really nice. And both were two different domains. Like for uh, EdTech, we were primarily focused on uh, lead to prospect, I mean, prospect to customer conversion. But for uh, the healthcare data, we focused on forecasting. Okay. So it was the, the capstone project was really fun. Okay. Sneha, would you like to add something to this? Yes, I think. Um, uh, interactions, pure interaction was something uh, which I found uh, very uh, valuable and uh, interesting uh, as a part of this uh, program. I mean, when I joined, I had not expected that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we would be a batch of these 85 uh, marketing brains coming from uh, varied industries. Mm -hmm. And um, we had uh, like some of our peers were already, uh, they were uh, the owners of their startups. Uh, some were uh, senior managers. So uh, the, the spectrum was very wide. And um, I felt, so I completed my MBA in 2007. And I realized that so much has changed. Yes, of course, we do read uh, HBR or, you know, we do interact with uh, leadership teams. But uh, a structured format of learning and uh, getting to learn from your peers, I think um, that learning is uh, valuable. And uh, all these uh, peers, they came with their own, um, you know, network. And um, something interesting which took place was that they got a lot of uh, uh, industry speakers. So, you know, we used to have something called as um, happy hours, uh, which was um, uh, in conjunction with uh, IIM and uh, Talent Sprint. But the group itself was so active and so involved that they themselves got their, um, uh, you know, uh, contacts to come and uh, share their experiences. So, um, you know, we, um, we uh, had one interesting session um, by the um, uh, Vice President Marketing of Alt Balaji. Now, me coming from a purely, uh, you know, medical healthcare industry for me that was so magical you know i mean entertainment uh, industry yeah. we watch netflix we watch uh, but what are the dynamics behind uh, uh, that you know how they recommend uh, those uh, shows to us and um, how they analyze trends which shows they need to put in more money the
the content that goes behind it i mean for a marketer that was like uh, i would say like a sumptuous feast you know we've had multiple of these sessions uh, so um, yes uh, this uh, this batch i would say was uh, the pure interactions were really something uh, very good great okay so we talked about uh, we jumped a step but we talked about why ai in marketing why do you want to really look at and then we went to the people whom you worked with now let's go one step up and talk about the program itself right program being offered by iim calcutta and talent sprint and this is the first cohort that came out this is probably a new category now i'm not aware of any other iims or any international institutions offering to uh, work working professionals in india right what is the one thing that made you decide to be an early adopter in this field and join this program by iim calcutta and talent sprint Yes, so, Neha. Please go ahead. Um, so, actually, uh, before taking up this course, uh, I spoke to my mentors, and uh, they were like, "Do you want to wait for a year and you know see how it spans and do it next year?" And um, somewhere, um, you know, um, I was I was quite happy with the entire experience. So, um, of course, I researched online. I wanted a course. which would um, you know my objective was that i don't want to become a data scientist i i mean numbers and statistics is something which uh, you know i don't go well that hand in hand i wanted something which will uh, you know help me infer data well it which will help me take more data driven um, decisions so this course i found was it was ai powered marketing you know so it was a good blend that's what the initial you know when i read through the uh, course curriculum it was a good blend of um, uh, the uh, coding part of it i mean how to analyze data and also you know how to then go into more advanced prescriptive analysis how to infer data and how to so that way i felt that the course curriculum was something which i was um, uh, which met my objectives um second part uh, i would say for uh, taking up this course was uh, i liked the way the uh, you know like i had many queries i had and uh, the, the talent sprint team was uh, you know they they made it a point to uh, like there was a good hand holding that's what i felt and it being covid you know uh, initially the whole idea was that my company wanted to sponsor this course for me but then covid came into picture and i didn't want to miss that first mover advantage you know uh, that it's a very different experience to be a part of the first cohort you know there are pros there are cons to it but i wanted to be a part of it and i was like okay so now the company is not doing it but i want to do it and uh, then i approached the talent sprint person saying that can you help me with some education loan and they were so um, uh, you know helpful with every step you know right from the start throughout the program to the end and uh, then of course i read about the professors who are taking the course so you know um, uh, i believe that whether it is iim or whether it is any other institute uh, each college or e has their um, certain specializations you know not everybody is going to be good into tech or um, some are going to be very good with financial programs and so i read about iim calcutta i read about professor sarvana i read about the professor sham and what their research uh, has been all about what have their uh, studies and then i felt that you know yes this is something wherein i can meet my learning objectives so that was my Thanks, Sorry. thanks, Neha. Over to you, Varsha. Do you want to add anything to what? Sneha yeah, said? for me, it was a very uh, different experience, mainly because uh, after I joined the course, I discovered that most of them have so much of experience. Like most of them have an experience of ten plus. For me, that is not the case. I just have a three years uh, experience. So when I when I first saw the profile and when I saw about the course, uh, what excited me was the AI part because I was always interested in learning more about where the market is going, and especially since it was during the COVID time, the Tuesday and the Sunday classes were kind of like a blessing because we were working from home and then there was no hassle of you know travel and all of those things. so uh, that was uh, that was quite a big sell point for me so i thought this is a right time and essentially the first cohort uh, 
it, it felt like you know you're you're uh, trailblazing something you're you're just uh, you know you're a part of something that is you know set records later because this is a kind of course and this kind of um, exposure is not available in other platforms mostly ai courses are very technical they are not oriented to marketing so when it was oriented to marketing i thought it you know it's a bit it's best that i take it up so and in the beginning i was very nervous about how i'll go through with it because of uh, my experience but then uh, later i had i discovered that i had a lot to learn mm -hmm. and like just like sneha pointed out we had a great group of people and in even uh, they took out time even during saturdays to host sessions uh, like the alt balaji sessions and we had one with uh, another uh, company other companies and we had a lot of people from different industries put out their views we also had one person from the fashion industry who uh, who gave inputs on how they uh, uh, utilize ai marketing to do a lakme fashion week during covid so okay. that was really interesting and it also uh, told us that nothing is impossible even if even during these circumstances uh, technology gives us a way out to market and still survive okay that's great that's a good input thanks thanks for sharing that uh, now let's move on to the uh, next part of this right i mean you you briefly brought out about the capstone projects that people talked about you briefly brought out uh, that uh, it's it's a program there where we can uh, learn we don't have to be a data scientist to learn this but we make so from that point of view i know i'm sure there little little bit of uh, coding that was necessary to get done but how did you manage that i mean because both of you specifically sneha you are not from the background of technology in terms of uh, writing codes and stuff like that and and uh, the pro program needed a little bit of it for you to make something work because it's not writing a whole program it is just to run a program right you are using a tool to run a program how did you cope up with that so i think uh, so first was an open mindset um, i will i knew that you know i don't come from that background so uh, when i enrolled for this course i was prepared that you know i probably need to stretch uh, and uh, maybe you know put more efforts and uh, uh, the the way it was taught you know like uh, when i look at my what it was at the in the first month and at the end uh, that is uh, when i presented my capstone project i actually ran a uh, code you know uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um, the uh, i did forecasting using um, arima so uh, when i when i when i see that i feel oh really i mean i could accomplish uh, that so um, we were taught in a very structured way and i think if i could make certain codes uh, work without errors obviously it doesn't uh, it doesn't happen the first time the second time the 10th time you have to keep doing it and uh, professors actually channelized our uh, efforts uh, they made sure that we don't get things uh, spoon fed so we were been told to practice ourselves and you know explore as much play with data as much uh, as we can uh, there were uh, days of frustration because you don't understand anything but um, so i think that um, the course handles uh, the the uh, the non technical uh, you know uh, part also uh, like if you don't have a technical background it handles it very well because um, they teach you right from how to you know uh, upload the software so we work majorly in r and uh, how to put take up the uh, how to upload the software uh, what is the uh, i mean why are we running the set of codes so what is the explanation behind e when you get that correct then you start seeing them in a different way so they are not just syntaxes then you know and uh, we were given a lot of um, case studies and um, i think we worked uh, um, in one of our submissions we worked on six case studies so which means six codes we also developed a app i mean uh, me doing something like this me actually making an app uh, was uh, something that i had not expected i would uh, i would do um, so and then uh, you started with zero background in coding so <laughs> yes right so which is good i think that's the end of the day i mean one of my colleague used to keep saying i think varshan also varshan keeps saying uh, that 
code is a way to communicate it's one language yeah. right a program like this is not to help you code the program is made to help you think differently yeah. right and you can express in any language it can be french it can be german it can be python it can be anything else <laughs> right so these are all expressions so that way i think that's that's an important part so do you believe that your way of thinking and looking at the marketing problems have changed after that sneha yes certainly i mean um, you know so just to just to give you an example that um, i mean i have been doing prescriptive analysis for so many years you know but um, uh, certain things like uh, you know when we did a when we worked on a case study of uh, a big basket and it was to do with um, recommendation um, engine uh, we realized that you know how um, patterns that is consumer behavior patterns can be used uh, to predict future recommendations to predict future outcomes so you know we have been doing digital marketing but um, this course somehow uh, helps in spotting those micro trends yeah. you know having a knowledge of ai helps you understand those micro trends and then you can make your campaigns a lot more roi oriented because you know uh, why you're investing where you're investing you know and um, like primarily i have been uh, seeing in my career that you know sales is the revenue generating function in any organization but i strongly believe that marketing is an equally revenue generating organization i mean function for any organization so um this way it it you know it helped us to understand how can you target customers where the likelihood of conversions is more you know based on data based on past trends so right. yeah that's all you varsha would you like to share your aha moment saying that oh i am now doing things very differently than what i used to 6 months back yeah uh, so i think most of the credit for coding goes to professor saravana so he taught us from the basics like the first two three classes he covered the basic which you know kind of like put a strong foundation so right from installing the r studio from like you know teaching the basics he covered a lot of groundwork he did a lot of groundwork so that was very uh, helpful while we were working on the case studies and other assignments so it was not only just about like copy pasting codes or things like that but it was about you know uh, strategizing the concept as to this is what i want my output to be and these are the uh, uh, techniques i'm going to use these are the models i'm going to use to get this particular output so uh, that's how it went so from from not liking coding at all i went to like uh, sitting on a saturday or a sunday four hours straight trying to you know resolve the errors you uh, are going through all the answers in stack overflow to, and trying to make sense of it and uh, it was uh, it was really fun so like uh, sneha suggested one of those uh, the case studies that we had gave us a lot of insight into different segments of the industry so uh, we had case studies on which we worked on text analytics we worked on clustering we worked on a multi classification problem uh, and we also uh, worked on uh, uh, collaborative filtering and 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 i got to know that you know netflix amazon all these uh, big companies this is what they do yeah. so this is what they do to survive in the market so and that was uh, that that was really good that was really nice to know that i was learning the new technologies that were that were being used on a day to day basis by us but then we don't recognize or we don't think deeply about how they do what they do yeah. so this course gave me a lot of inputs into that Okay, so maybe I'll ask a very interesting question. That question that I am trying to answer for the last thirty-two years in my work life, right? Uh, I mean, there are a few problems when you are in charge of marketing and sales, right? There are three, four key things that I, as a head of business, wants to solve, right? I really want to tell, want you to tell me if these use cases that I have as a head of business can be solved by the learning that you have had. right with the right data of course data has to be captured ahead right well in advance so one of the things is am i spending my marketing money efficiently yes or no is this the will that be 
is this use case be solved by effectively using ai in marketing so if you ask me um without ai probably you would not have a um, uh, it would be more of an hypothesis mm -hmm. it would be it would be more on uh, you know knowledge that you have um, or you would say that okay i did this campaign that month my sales increased mm -hmm. so you know this campaign has worked for me but uh, with ai it's more to do with uh, it helps you look at seasonality okay uh, uh, maybe it's not this month's campaign that got me results in that month it could be something which i did 3 months back yeah so i'm able to you know um make a decision which is uh, which is statistically driven you know which yeah. is taking into consideration a holistic um uh, you know uh, approach of various factors which are influencing that revenue growth or that revenue sales mm -hmm. so i i would see it's more systematic yeah okay so varsha the next question i have uh, as a head of business uh, to really look at is which leads should i need to focus on more right so that my efforts of sales is optimized did you do can any you use cases again? of similar category in your program can you come again sorry which of the leads that i have okay. i need to focus more to be able to get effective sales or achieve my business goals yeah i think based on leads uh, this program gave me a lot of a uh, lot of inputs because uh, you you can determine which lead is effective and who, who has the probability of converting into a customer more based on the consumer behavior okay. so it made me realize that tracking is so important you can have so much of data but if the data is inconsistent that you cannot apply it in ai or in ai so you can still uh, you know uh, i have i mean see which lead is converting which is a hot lead cold lead warm lead we can uh, filter and we can do it but then mm -hmm. only if you have the a consistent amount of data the ai will be able to predict so data cleaning is very important so while uh, doing one of our case studies i think it was on bm bank so we had uh, almost uh, six not three variables to deal with so it is uh, while uh, implementing ai it is also important that we recognize which variable is more important to us because we collect a lot of data on a daily basis but not every data is necessary for us to determine which lead will convert into a customer so okay. we used variable importance to uh, like determine that these are the variables that i need mm -hmm. and using these i'm going to determine who is uh, better for me like okay. uh, on which marketing campaign i should focus on on what kind of leads i should focus on so that gave, gave me like better insights as to how uh, to work uh, to work with leads and how to you know improve focus so that they can be handed over to the sales team good so we talked about the top of the funnel which is marketing and effectively marketing it second is to really look at which leads are more valuable now the third one of the biggest challenges business face is engaging with the leads making them relate to the brand right making them uh, think of the brand as one of the top of the mind recall when they actually decide because there's a huge gap generally between the time they get to know and the time they decide right on the customer engagement is there any use cases that uh, you have been exposed to as part of this program so um so actually um, as you rightly pointed out you know uh, that there is an engagement funnel that a lead has uh, come to or has shown interest in your uh, product but uh, at what um, you know uh, stage should the lead be transferred say from a chat bot like a virtual assistant uh, to the uh, sales person in charge you know so uh, we did do a case where uh, um, we looked at uh, a lot of ai bots you know mm -hmm. so um, uh, where uh, there were um, the lead would uh, have certain set of questions and then at what stage should this lead be then transferred uh, for the next level of say counseling mm -hmm. or showing them the product like for example when we did the eureka forbes case uh, 
we saw that uh, leads which are actually taking the demo they are more likely to go ahead and uh, do the purchase so which means we realize that you know the more amount of say engagement has to happen at uh, that particular stage or we need to drive uh, users or prospects to reach that particular um, stage and again uh, you know I, like when we do digital marketing we do uh, we do campaigns on say linkedin we do it on various facebook on various other platforms but which are the most engaging campaigns you know that is uh, uh, is the post that i put on linkedin driving more traffic and uh, um, you know did i the ones who came via that campaign uh, did they qualify you know so uh, that way we are able to um, analyze that which engagement is actually giving us more conversions and is more likely to con uh, convert the return on investment for which lead is uh, is maximum so yeah but i think there's somebody who wants to ask a question let me just unmute hi uh, i am not able to see your name yes see can you please go ahead and ask your question introduce yourself hello good morning everyone can you good morning listen me yes yeah uh, good morning uh, sneha varsha this is anil rati actually i joined with my uh, doctor's uh, system so that's why my not okay anil rati <laughs> yeah i am part of hot one group 7 so i think my other peers can also listen you're not audible are you see right now am i audible Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I am also from part a uh, cohort part one group oh, seven. Okay. Anil Rathi. Anil Rathi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, I uh, do agree with uh, Varsha and Sneha, uh, but uh, I joined this session a little bit later, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you were asking about how can uh, we get more business. So uh, you were asking about the. Uh, Talent sprint? No, no. Generally, I am asking. I mean, it's a use case discussion. It has nothing to do with okay. talent okay. sprint as a business, right? I mean, all businesses okay. have the same questions. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That is not an issue. So, uh, actually, I thought uh, definitely the program was really so good. Uh, it's a, a great learning. But uh, uh, in general uh, perspective, if I say uh, someone uh, joining this program. if he is not from a statistics background or not from digital marketing background then definitely this is a big challenge for him mm -hmm. just like me absolutely to see end of the day it's the statistics i mean not statistics in the term of theoretical but the probabilities and other stuff you need to one needs to understand to analyze data anyway because and yes. we are managing data yeah and the uh, project on uh, edtech data that was really uh, we have to go through the data coming from uh, the real platform so mm -hmm. uh, what was the campaign how it was uh, covered and how uh, many days it was run because i have just completed my digital marketing certification from xlri mm -hmm. so i think if we can uh, uh, connect to the data which is the real time data yeah. definitely we, we would be able to uh, predict more leads and more conversions absolutely see end of the day this is a program right when we really do yeah. our consulting work or get the real data and work on it i'm sure end of the day every company will keep their data with lot of sanctity right yeah. and not so, uh, expose it extensively but yeah. absolutely true see end of the day ai works only when you have an effective quality data that's available and i'm sure there will be some deviations accepted in terms of incomplete data but basically it has to be good enough to anyway start the business, start the process see yeah. i think one of the very interesting questions that coming out of what anil asks is i think people who understand how this is going to be used later will get data better yeah right that's that's yeah. probably an important thing right <clears throat> because uh, one of the uh, group person from group 5 uh, mm -hmm. i think is a digital marketer in is in the same domain mm -hmm. it could uh, understand the data better and uh, take a decision accordingly because he has also chosen the edtech project yeah yeah i understand see at end of the day the objective is you learn the concept here and implement in your real life data yeah. in your yeah. business 
and we thought that we thought that as neha and varsha and all uh, we thought all we all peers thought that we want to give something concrete for the talent sprint that but that was a project outside this yeah but <laughs> the data part of the education uh, program yes, wouldn't do sound right yeah but the data was not enough and uh, not the real time so as a digital marketer i could uh, connect uh, this one because uh, after spending my 25 years in uh, b2b industry and especially in one industry in cement mm. uh, people are even not aware about ai techniques and uh, even i don't think for next one or two or five years they will be able to uh, implement ai techniques so it, it just takes one highly motivated early adopter yeah to do something for everybody else to follow yeah right that's why i keep saying that the early adopter cohort is a very valuable cohort because these are people who are going to set trends mm-hmm. right so, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and one more uh, request from uh, my side if uh, we need some any additional specialization or any additional uh, uh, kind of uh, knowledge regarding the probability or what we have been learned in uh, our college or school days for 25 years back so definitely brushing that one should be highlighted in the sure. introduction i think there is also the preparatory modules and other stuff to get a refresher that's already there yeah. that of course all the people who do not have that background should do the refresher before getting into the program and those are well structured and available on the platform so nice thank you sir okay. thanks thanks awesome. anil thanks a lot i have shishir asking a trying to ask a question please go ahead shishir thank you sir uh, am i audible to you yes sir please go ahead uh, sir uh, i am from an economics background so regarding technology i don't have much uh, uh, like understanding like not much deep understanding but yes like i have some problems with uh, related to my business like i am going to start a new firm so it would be like dealing in exports so like while doing the digital marketing and while pre- uh, like uh, like uh, uh, preparing the website so i had two issues which i came up with like one was this this content generation so like does ai has a role to play in content generation i came to know about one thing this is like a natural language generation so does it mm-hmm. comes under ai and can it help me in generating some content from content i mean to say that suppose there are some government websites so like they are uh, uh, giving us some data regarding exports to like exports of certain product to say certain countries so i want to like use that data uh, and i want to use ai or nlg or anything which is right now available to produce some content like exports of say this went up by this and exports of this products went up by this in this month so this is the seasonality so like does this technology has uh, progressed to such an extent that is it can help me in getting the uh, paragraphs from the data itself okay and uh, the second thing is that similarly like from like there are some government websites like farm trade and uh, these sort of stuff uh, like when i go to that site does this uh, technology allows me to extract the data from there and similarly do some analysis and get to know about seasonality trends and everything so you got to know about the thing which i am asking you sure. got to understand, understand. it yeah. Oh, yeah so, so this is something know, like real business issue which i am facing yeah, right now yeah. let me start with the first one and the second one i will leave it to the uh, participants of the program to answer because the first one content generation is far more than just marketing right it is all domains together thanks to uh, my uh, association with talent sprint and all the top institutions we do various programs on where ai is used Uh, so you ask about a very interesting use case wherein you really look at some data available on the statistics of certain exports and imports etc and create a content on that you may be surprised to know this but 90% of financial performance analytics in the capital markets is only done by ai no individual writes those reports the companies balance sheet of the last quarter and our uh, pnl account of last quarter and this quarter are taken last year is taken and uh, ai engine writes that okay and and that's a well proven and uh, well stabilized activity over the last maybe 10 years but extremely exhaust extensively used over the last 2 3 years having said that that requires lot of learning content 
we should have a good quality data available to learn from right it's ai is like child learning something right it gets exposed to lot of people using lot of words the vocabulary improves right similarly for the ai the quality of the articles improve the second part of it i mean so the short answer is yes this is a solved problem it's being used extensively and it is very easy to do it in analytical content right right sir right how is the growth happening whether cashew nuts are growing, uh, getting uh, exported more or it is pepper right right what is the percentage growth in cashew versus pepper right, right. is the export largely from kerala versus uh, indonesia right i mean those things are available now <clears throat> coming to the second part of it i think in my view that problem is a little earlier to this program right mm. capturing data right mm. capturing data data uh, munching they call it is a very critical activity and uh, while i don't want to answer this question whether it's covered in the program or not but doing that is extremely critical for any algorithms to work over to you varsha and sneha please whoever wants to take it please take this part of the question so sishir i think he told that he is going to start a firm yes so i think it will be very useful because uh, where in the beginning of the course they cover about how to uh, segment target and position your product in the market which is extremely important because uh, there are so many products that are launched in the market but uh, it is important that they have their core values addressed as to how they are going to segment it target and position them and what audience they are going to cater and what kind of uh, marketing activities campaigns that they are going to do so it is very important to have that strategy so in the beginning of the course i think it will be uh, uh, this this was covered to a large extent in the beginning of the course for us even before we went on to r which kind of like helped us to uh, understand the case studies better and implement the same in the r to get the outputs so this covered the basics so well so i think this course might be pretty useful to you thank you ma'am thank you okay so let's let's i think we have kushbu pande wanting to ask a question let me request her to unmute herself and hi am i audible yes kushbu please go ahead okay so uh, it has been around 4 months since uh, i've been thinking to get into ai powered marketing in fact this course is very very attractive let me tell you especially for marketers uh, so now about me i am a marketing professional with 12 plus years of experience in education industry and uh, all the problems that you just stated in this session are the problems being faced by me like how to analyze data how to predict uh, trends etc so my question is i would like to take up this course for uh, skill enhancement and i would like to enhance employability portion of mine because it uh, more or less my uh, job profile has got stagnant so wanted to understand since i'm not uh, but then having all having said all this one of the apprehensions is that statistics is uh, not my forte in fact math, i was weak at maths and statistics programming i am good at so okay. for the first question is uh, whether i am going to take a right decision in, uh, in the direction of enhancing my employability portion number 1 number 2 is uh, whether i'll be able to cope with the statistics uh, apprehension so these are my two questions so see how would you like to go yes because i think uh, me and khushbu probably uh, sailing in the same uh, ship uh, i too uh, have a equal number of years of experience and yes i too felt that somewhere you know um, uh, what's next for me in my career i felt uh, you know i'm i too felt i'm stagnating and uh, upscaling uh, learning something uh, new was the answer to it which i felt after a lot of introspection so um, i'll take your second question first where you said that you know uh, whether you will be able to cope up uh, so let me tell you um, i have been equally weak in maths and uh, you're good at programming i was 
I'm no good at programming either. Okay. So um, this course is just not about coding. You know, this course is a very good blend. The objective of this course is not for us to become data scientists, but it's about us to, you know, be able to talk effectively with people who are handling data. See, at the end of the day, as brand custodians, as business owners, we understand better, you know, that um, uh, what are the um, uh, business objectives for my brand? Where do I want to take my brand? Okay, how much market share do I want to take from ABC, other competitor brands? So that lies with you. That is not something which your data scientist or anybody is going to be able to work on. But unless until you don't know the language in which you should talk to that person, you know, you're always going to be uh, slightly at the, uh, like at the back foot. So this course um, helped me understand, okay, uh, variables are variables, but you know, there are something like continuous variables. Uh, you know, there are categorical variables. Okay, what is supervised learning? What is unsupervised learning? Uh, trust me, I knew nothing of this. And, um, I felt my conversations during lunch breaks with my team members have started to become more and more meaningful. You know, I'm able to uh, uh, maybe learn something from my peers and use it in my um, uh, day to day activities. Uh, just to give you an example, um, uh, I did a project uh, which was not about branding or uh, which was not about uh, launch excellence. It was about forecasting. Now, forecasting is something which is taken care of by my operations team. But, uh, you know, I worked on it and then I could go and speak to, you know, my um, other department explaining that, you know, maybe going forward, we could have, when we are launching a new product, we could have inventories in so and so way. You know, uh, so yes, it definitely will help you get meaningful, richer conversations. To answer your first question, and um, you know, um, I would say that today the corporate environment is a mix of you have your Gen Y, you have your Gen X, and you know, you have your Gen Z. So uh, imagine, I mean, uh, if I say Varsha, she probably when she's, she did her MBA, she would have learned so many things which actually I wouldn't know, you know, and if she comes up to me with a project, uh, if she's say reporting into me and she comes up with a proposal to me that, uh, you know, let's do this, I have uh, uh, an understanding of AI. And if I don't know what she's talking about, Maybe she's coming up with a good proposal and I would not be able to understand what she's trying to convey to me, you know. So um, this course definitely helps you in uh, broadening your prescriptive analysis. I think that is something which I feel is very important for mid level senior level managers. You know, you can get the data crunching mining analysis done through a data scientist but how you interpret and how you translate it into an actionable strategy is something which I feel it's useful. Maybe I'd like to supplement what Sneha said, right? The whole program is all about understanding what tools are available. I can go in a car, I can go in an aircraft, I can go in a cycle, right? All those are available. Which of those algorithms I can use? But we need to ask the right question. Where am I going? Right, that's the most important thing. And for going where, which one to be used, right? See, and, and one of the things, and, and clearly, when we talk about uh, what you, uh, I mean, understanding the the probability and other stuff, it is not say going coming back to the example. We don't need to know how car works. We need to make the car drive. I mean, we have we should be able to drive the car, right? Only that extent is now. how is not necessary. What is important? Right. While I haven't personally attended the program, I have been interacting with people. I hope what I'm saying is right, Varsha. Okay. Good. So I think there are more questions. Kushmu, I hope this is answered answers your question. Now oh, yeah. I have Bharadwaj asking the question. I am requesting you to go ahead, unmute yourself and speak, Bharadwaj. Am I audible? Yes, Bharadwaj, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, 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 so, uh, my career journey uh, resonates with uh, Sneha. Is Your line is not clear, uh, Bharadwaj. Can you be coming closer to the mic or something? Sure, sure. 
Sure. Is it uh, better by any chance? Far better, yes. Yeah. So uh, I was saying that my career journey is uh, uh, pretty much similar to what Sneha have had, uh, but uh, with significantly less number of experience. I am a part of an organization uh, which takes care of these this uh, ORG IMS data and. Uh, uh for 5 years now i've been into uh, i've been looking in, at the same uh, data set uh on different domains uh, including healthcare and otc uh and uh, uh, i am basically involved in uh, generating more insights for the uh, uh, for my clients and for understanding the market better how their competitors are doing uh, uh, if they're losing the market share then what is going wrong for them and what how how they can uh, get their share back and uh, uh, how better uh, they can improve their uh, bottom line basically and i was also involved in data science of uh, uh, this data as well cleaning the data and uh, uh, maintaining the quality of the data and uh, uh, involving certain processes to clean the data so uh, basically uh, i completely resonate with her that uh, the challenges which uh, she had that uh, she is not good at maths and uh, she was not good at maths and uh, probably uh, she had one more uh, uh, concern in her mind that uh, uh, she did not want to be a only a data guy so that is what i also have in my mind and while i'm doing for more than 5 years while i'm doing uh, and generating such kind of insights and you know Uh, understanding the data better and uh, helping our clients for with the consulting and everything uh, and answering their uh, marketing questions how this course uh, maybe it's too early to uh, for early for me to ask this question and uh, maybe by going uh, uh, through the uh, curriculum of the course uh, i can uh, have this answer but i just wanted to hear it from the directly from the horse's mouth that how this course can help me out with such kind of role and uh, you know improve my employability and uh, career aspects further and my learning curve thank you okay so maybe i'll just ask saying that if either of you had a impact of this program in your career other than just decision making yes. i'm sorry i didn't get it uh, please i will mean, just ask if there if there is any change in their career role after they have started the program so maybe we'll start there and then connect to the answers yes neha you started saying something oh. i think uh, immediate impact i think varsha has had uh, in her uh, designation <laughs> not me really uh, senior level uh, manager levels uh, you know you don't get promotions that uh, easily you know so uh, so yeah i think varsha definitely has seen a promotion congratulations mm-hmm. congrats varsha yeah thank you i just right. recently got promoted as a marketing analyst Okay. and uh, i think we we are just going to like uh, tell our managers regarding the our inputs and uh, uh, things that we learned from the course and what we can implement it uh, in our products okay so maybe i'll start answering uh, bharatraj question a little bit before i hand over to both of you i think the question about you have been doing analysis of data for long how will this program help and uh, i don't want to end up being a data analyst all are reasonably fair challenges that everybody faces fear everybody faces i think let me just start saying that if you are already looking at data i think you start on a far better scale than most marketing people because marketing people i mean it's historically it's always a question whether marketing is art or a science right and that uh, what generally was a art slowly becoming science and ai is probably accelerating the process of science right and and uh, people who are close to it are people who understand data better having said that i think it's really important to define what is your career goal right there are two three ways people come to a particular program and it's not a single source right there are people in the last cohort who have been largely into marketing and coming into saying that how do i do my marketing effectively there are people who are analysts looking at data but not knowing why they are doing that for coming into the program and becoming a data analyst or to make marketing efficient right there is a third category people who have been in sales for long right have been in b2b sales or b2b uh, b2c sales for a long time trying to move over to marketing with a unique positioning of ai because they have learned i mean 
digital marketing everybody learns but it's not enough in today's context right it's more operational role rather than a marketing role so with these three being there i mean you are coming from an area where you are probably in a better pedestal in terms of understanding data better right and if your objective is to use that analytics currently or i mean i may, may not be right but what i understood is you are predicting market shares or looking at what the market shares what are the trends in the market and stuff like that so honing the skill further and focusing on marketing can be a great opportunity subject to your own uh, uh, interest and inclination in that area so that i is my commentary uh, sneha varsha would either of you want to take it up further um i think i'll take up this question because i very re well resonate uh, i have worked uh, as a product manager you know i have worked on org ims data and of course the smsrc the prescription data and um, so i know what it is because uh, when i work with glenmark when i work with zydus uh, these were the tools which were this data was used in every business review meeting okay um, to tell you how ai can help um, ai help me look at data from different lenses okay so just to maybe give you an example uh, if you're looking at say prescription data of um, maybe a uh, anti diabetic therapy you know and where uh, a doctor has prescribed probably various molecules maybe say it is metformin glimepride okay and you have a lot of text so you know uh, there are different indications that have been um, uh, you know been uh, written or prescribed for that particular molecule now uh, we did something very interesting which was not on healthcare uh, but um, you know a use case that we did for iscon where we did text analytics and uh, we tried to find out which are those words you know which are driving say positive or negative emotions similarly when when you say it is a diabetic drug uh, which are those indications uh, in which uh, the 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 drug has been prescribed more like for example your sglt2 is something like what would be used only as a od dosage so a once daily dosage whereas maybe your metformin is going to be your twice daily or thrice daily so you know having said that you can actually analyze text data i mean you can do text analysis and you can come up with such rich insights you know and um they are all data driven so you know they are all backed up by the machine giving you the uh, giving you those uh, insights which uh, you're looking at from a different lens you know that is what i would say second is coming back to your say org and ims data um, we did a interesting use case of um, clustering you know um, basically uh, finding similarities or likelihoods in uh, certain uh, groups okay so um, uh, i have a group a which has similar um, uh, dynamics i have a group b which has its own similar dynamics now if a new user comes to me you know i will be able to predict as to this user would go into or fall into a group a or fall into a group b and accordingly i can recommend and accordingly i can make strategies to you know uh, focused for that particular um, um, lead of of that particular user so yes definitely um, i would recommend that uh, you know uh, you being at uh, you you said you have uh, around 5 to 6 yeah. years of experience it's good that you are coming across this course uh, early in your career you know and um, you can definitely uh, benefit uh, from it thanks thanks uh, sneha we are i think already little uh, beyond thanks. our time schedule i have a very interesting question from a uh, question from ajay on the chat let me take that up uh, ajay says he has 25 years of experience in sales management and responsible for leading sales distribution and people strategy uh, okay, to achieve business objectives no i don't have professional edu education in technology sorry it's scrolled up in what way will the program be useful is that a right course for people like me okay that's a very interesting question uh okay maybe i'll start uh, i think this is a program which i wish to do i have 32 years of experience and uh, has always been managing sales team for long right and hopefully 
in this cohort, I will join in along with all of you because my colleagues, two other colleagues went into the program last cohort, right? Uh, it's, it's interesting, right? End of the day, end of the day, the role of people like uh, you is to ensure that we allocate resources effectively at the right place at the right time. The resources may be marketing budgets, the resources may be people, resources may be leads, resources may be market segments, right? I think if we can understand in the eyes of the data through the, we can look at it in the eyes of the data, things can be a very, very different from how general intuition and, uh, I mean, see, end of the day, what is the value that we get out of it? Human beings have limited variables we can manage at a time. Two, three, four, maybe somebody is very good, seven. But I haven't found too many people who can manage 10 dimensions at a time, right? I think we should leave that to the machines, right? I mean, we know that, I mean, one of the, one of the best Best uh, examples for that is cricket, right? When you watch cricket, you will see saying that when the pitch is like this, when the ball is pitched at this time, place, right? Where should the fielder be? I mean, kind of analytics that they can, because there's 10, 15 different things. The quality of the pitch, the bowler, the batsman, the uh, climate, where the wind speed, there are 100 variables that are being looked at before we predict. I think if marketers have that, Business people have that. It's, it's phenomenal to me, right? If I really look at it, I was just telling Sneha in the beginning, if India's pharma and healthcare market is 20 billion, and on an average, I'm sure most companies have 15 to 20% as their marketing budget, right? Probably this is the largest spend by the industry, maybe other than salaries, right? I'm leaving CapEx out for production companies. That's it. So it's such a huge thing. And if there is a way to take uh, informed analytical decisions than emotional decisions, I'm sure it will help us. I think from that point of view, uh, making us think differently, making us use data effectively is absolutely necessary. And, and I now hand over to Varsha and Sneha saying that how this program helped you to think that way. I mean, the problem definition is clear, but going to the other side of it and making it work. Varsha, you want to take it? Yeah. So Difficult question, Bharadwaj. Good. <laughs> yes, Varsha. So, uh, data driven decision making is very important. Because so most of the organizations, they have uh, so much of data, but they do not use it as the core uh, thing to de design. Uh, when, uh, earlier when you were talking about spending ROI also, that, uh, there are a lot of marketing activities on which you spend on. But then you never, ne you don't actually know which campaign is working better, what is uh, actually uh, working and which audience you can actually target. Yeah. So I think uh, AI and ML will kind of help you like strengthen that part. You'll exactly know who your target is. You'll exactly know what kind of campaign uh, campaigns work for you and how you can formulate the decisions based on that in the future. So I think this course will be very helpful for that. Okay, great. I have a question from Celia. I'll take that as a last question and from there we will uh, close for the day. As a non-technical person, how do I prepare myself? Is there any tips and tools that we will pre-reading that will help you? Absolutely. I'm sure uh, Neha, whose email ID is shared there, would be able to provide you some inputs on what we uh, what uh, you can learn. Uh, pre-reading, both in terms of statistics and technology that you need to learn. Aditro is also on the call, one of the senior people in my team who has already gone through this program. So both of them will definitely help you out with this, uh, Celia. Now, let me just close with one single line question, for, request for a single line answer from both of you on the program, right? Give me, I mean, okay, it's just less than a week since you graduated from this program, okay? In one line, can you tell me what is the emotion of having been able to complete a program like this? Asha? 
I am uh, proud of myself and very happy. Proud and happy. That's good. Sneha. Um, I feel uh, I feel accomplished. You know, um, yeah, the the this is so. You know, um, I had said this uh, even on the last day of our course that twenty uh, twenty has been a very difficult year uh, for all of us, near dear ones. And but down the line, I will remember twenty twenty as a year um, where you know um, uh, I learned something. Uh, I always wanted to uh, be. Uh, Like have an I am uh, you know learning uh, tag to uh, to myself and I'll always remember twenty twenty as a year where um, I had some phenomenal learning uh, from some some really uh, you know talented professors and uh, made some good friends you know like minded marketing uh, peers so yes great so it has been an opportunity for you to go up in your. abilities on one side and a great professional networking on the other yes and a great learning experience great learning. too yes great learning experience great, fact, i think there is a poll uh, that's been launched please answer that poll uh, sneha please go ahead i had one thing to add here and i feel it's important uh, because this is something which goes into everybody's mind when they are looking at upscaling so um, you know there are a lot of courses uh, which are uh, offered i mean uh, in fact since we did a capstone on edtech uh, i came to know that you know what is the size of the edtech market which are the players and um, everything uh, one thing which i have really liked about talent sprint um, you know is uh, their platform so uh, right from the day one uh, the lectures have been live sessions because trust me uh, self paced learning uh, it, probably can work for some but it doesn't work for me so these were like um, you know uh, these were live sessions where dedicatedly the professor used to come online uh, one of our professors actually used to take uh, lectures from the us so he used to wake up at 3 in the morning because our lecture used to be uh, at uh, uh, you know 2 uh, in the afternoon okay so um, uh, it was so interactive uh, the learning therefore was i felt uh, very very rich rather than just reading books or you know having pre recorded sessions this was the platform of talent sprint uh, something which i felt uh, uh, you know boosted my overall uh, learning experience thanks thanks sneha for that that's useful uh, so i have there's a question for you sneha from rohan right Uh, i'll read it for read it out for you uh, he's complimenting you saying that this is one of the best seminar he has attended his question is he has started a startup in uh, digital marketing and uh, is working on the it domain as a developer and he feels that marketing would be a long career long term career for uh, for himself and for his mba going forward as well so as an inter- entrepreneur in the initial stages of marketing what areas he should focus and build if he wants to enhance ai role of ai in the startup he is a marketing startup company doing b2b marketing and the question is marked to you so i will hand it over to you so uh, first of all uh, congratulations uh, that you know uh, you are uh, getting into a, a startup i think the first thing which even i uh, learned was um, you know uh, data should be collected uh, in a very structured manner so that you can use it for analysis and inference so since you are a startup i think um, you know if and you will be obviously doing a lot of digital marketing campaigns so making sure that you are collecting data in a usable format i think that is very very important uh, um, otherwise you would not be able to actually generate uh, meaningful insights so it is something like you know i feel that there should be a culture of uh, data in in the in the organization i mean every uh, person in the organization should then or start looking at data from a way that you know we are collecting it so that we can use it process it uh, and uh, predict it so from a point of view of ai um, uh, you know uh, that you are just saying that uh, if i want to enhance ai in my existing startup i think the first thing is to make sure that the data that you are collecting uh, is in a way that it's usable um second thing is uh, being a digital um, uh, marketing startup i would say that uh, 
AI is something which is going to supplement or which is going to boost your digital marketing efforts. So it's not that, you know, uh, AI is going to take over digital marketing. No. Um, uh, every model, okay, uh, requires a human being uh, uh, to be trained, you know. So as a digital marketer, you will have to train the model so that it can give you the uh, insights. So uh, having AI or having a background of AI, it will actually uh, take your digital marketing efforts to a next level is, is what uh, I feel or is what I have learned in the last uh, six months. And maybe I would like to add saying that that can be a clear USP for a new startup to disrupt the market. Because end of the day, this is little early in its journey on how AI is going to be used in marketing, at least in India, while there are big companies, large companies doing it, right? As a startup, if you're going to service 10 companies, right, 20 companies, it's going to be a great USP for you to position yourself very differently than what anybody else gives and be a disrupting force in that area. I think we are 20 minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, Varsha, please go ahead. Yeah, I also want to add that you should you should know where ex for what exactly you want to use AI for your data, whether it's going to be for customer conversion, whether it's going to be enhancing campaigns, because uh, it is important that you have a strategy planned before you use that particular data and apply AI on it. Because blindly applying AI on it will not work because data cleaning is such an important step because the data needs to be really clear and consistent for the AI to work and give you results that you can actually interpret and apply. So sometimes it, it so happens that you get the result but you don't know what to do with the result that you got. So it's important that you have a plan. Great, thanks, thanks, Varsha, for that. I think uh, we planned for 60 minutes, it's almost at 50, uh, 80 minutes. Thanks both uh, Sneha and Varsha for joining uh, joining me today on the session, lovely interaction. I enjoyed the last 80 minutes with both of you. And thanks participants for asking very interesting questions, making us think and answer many times, and, and it's very useful. And uh, congratulations, Varsha, on your career growth and uh, all the best for far, far uh, more successes to come for both of you. I'm sure you are trailblazers in this area. Look forward to catching up with you both again. And all the best to the participants. There is a poll that's been uh, uh, launched. Please respond to that. And our team at Talent Sprint are available anytime to take any questions. Any more questions, please send it by email. We can request Sneha's and Varsha's responses as well. Thank you and have a great Sunday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.